Hey guys, how's it going today? We're gonna to be doing a demonstrative video. I know we're not outside, it's pouring outside. That doesn't matter, because we're indoors, because I actually want to demonstrate my taming method that I talk about in a lot of my videos, especially of recent, but I just really don't get in the enclosures and really show you guys exactly what to do. And I get a lot of questions of what to look for and such like that, so that's really what this video is about. And what's really cool is if Olivia, you wanna pan over, we got two adults in here. We got a juvenile over there. This one's very crazy, definitely not tamed down. And we got 11 babies in here that we can work with. And I can show you kind of how they respond at different stages of life. So let's get to it. Okay, so let's start off with the adults. These are my tamed down pair. They're just like LG. LG came though pretty tamed down, so I can't really take credit for that. But Asus and Dell, they're really tamed down. I did a lot of work with them. So I'm just gonna show you guys what you're actually looking for when doing this method and when you've really reached the peak of your, your optimal goal for this method, I guess. So basically, the main method I have that I always talk about is fiddling around in the enclosure, being present, just putting your kind of hand in there and stuff. Ultimately, what you're looking for is them to come to you and check you out. So you see how Ace is here checking me out like that. This is exactly what you want to happen. And it's gonna be pretty brief. I mean, Asus is sticking around a little bit, gonna probably climb up me. And this is a really bonded, tamed Aki that I have, so, you know, that's warranted. But even if it's just a couple licks and they move away, that's a big deal. As babies especially, if you can get just a couple licks out of them like that, and then them kind of move off slowly and not run away, dart away, that is especially bigger than what I kind of just did with Asus here, who's a full grown adult. Because like I've said many times, once they get around eight to 12 months of age, they get a lot more braver and they kind of naturally get a little bit more curious and into their human. This human right here wants you to subscribe in the lower right hand corner, hit that bell as well for the latest updates on the channel. Right, John? You got, got to look, got to look in the camera. They, oh, no, below, there you go. <laughs> Hi, cutie. Now. Like I said, you should probably be doing some fiddling. It's good to kind of just lay your hand here when they're close. That way you don't scare them away with any fast motions. They even do that as adults. So if you're fiddling, that might get them interested in you. If you look at probably Dell right about now, she's definitely intrigued what I'm doing down here. She's kind of glancing, making sure that I'm not releasing any bugs in here. So as she came closer because of that, you can see she's kind of propping up and she'll probably jump down as I'm doing this. Oh, and here comes Aces. <laughs> when one goes, the other goes as well in here. But now is a good time to just kind of lay my hand there when they're down here. So when they get close, it's good to kind of just stay still so you don't freak them out. But when they're not close, you want to do the fiddling. So you look distracted, you look like you're not into them, and then they get curious in your actions. So that's kind of what I mean about the fiddling and the just laying your hand. And eventually you have your Aki's doing stuff like this, where you open it up and they just kind of come check out. I mean, look at Del right there stretching out, trying to check out the camera. This is what you optimally want to work towards. And after you kind of work with them and get past the point of them being afraid of you and you can lay your hand in there and they just lick it and climb on you and when you fiddle they come over to you that's when you could do a lot of the petting and they really don't mind they really don't even notice you could do the picking up really easily I mean it's not even that big of a deal so that's what you get to once you get to that point now let's work over to my juvenile Aki this is my first clutch ever Aki that I hung on to from Asus and Dell coming up on 11 months come October, I believe. They hatched around November 1st, which is my birthday, so I remember that. So we got a juvenile here, and this one does not like me too much. So let's lay my hand in there, and I just kinda wanna go a little bit closer than you ordinarily would like to when starting this. You don't wanna go near them right away. You kinda wanna exist in some area they usually frequent and let them come to you. But I just wanna demonstrate how this guy doesn't really want anything to do with me. So I'm just gonna put, exactly. Look, pops it out over there like, what are you doing? What's up? So I moved my hand a little bit closer slowly. You can, as you do this and get used to the guy and know that they're not gonna maybe freak out if you get a little bit closer, you can do things like this and try to like make them interact a little bit if they're not too willing to get near you. Some are just stubborn like that. But you can see even there, how he was licking, not really touching me, but was licking towards me. He could still sense me doing that. 
And that's fine, that's a great first step right there. So all that you just saw there is really kind of a good first step if you're just starting this with an Aki. If you can get there, that's really starting the whole process. Now I do wanna say if you wanna move your hand away, get out of the enclosure and you're close to them, don't just pull it back, you're gonna scare them. I, I just wanna give this piece of information because I tend to do this a lot where I just rip my hand away and then that just freaks them out and sets it back a little bit, our relationship here. So when you wanna move your hand away, just go really slow. You could even see doing this, he's still not really too thrilled with me moving my hand, but I moved it away slow, didn't run away, ultimately a good interaction. Okay, so I did say in the beginning of working with the juvenile over here that you should not start as close to the Aki as I did there. I was kind of demonstrating. So right here, my distance from the Aki, this is a good kind of first step. You want to lay your hand in there the first couple times when you really start up this taming process of existing in the enclosure, fiddling around. You want to put your hand somewhere they could visually see it when you put your hand in there so they know you're in there. You want to make sure that as soon as you kind of get in there, they see your hand there, they know where it's at. So that's kind of what I have going here. I know that he can see my hand from that distance. He knows it's here and he could choose to come closer or not. That's totally up to him. And then I can go around and I can fiddle a little bit with some dirt. I can check on some of the climbing wood. We actually just redecorated in here. Everything looks good. And then if he wants to come check me out, that's great. But do notice that the first couple times you work with them, maybe even the first month, they probably won't come near you and that's completely normal. This one, despite not liking me, is a little curious to me. I mean, look at him right there. He uh, is looking over at me. You could tell he's kind of pondering what I'm doing. And that's really what you need to exploit of Aki's is their curiosity. Pretty much in the beginning, if they're not running away, jumping into a burrow or a hide, that's actually pretty positive. The fact that they're just kind of staying out in their enclosure knowing you're in it. So the fact that this one was kind of just out hanging with me while I was being in the enclosure, that's a good sign. And I would stay with it, stay in the enclosure, keep doing stuff as long as they stay out. If they run in a burrow and hide, that's probably when you want to give them a break. One thing I kind of always recommend is go with the longer period of time instead of frequency. So for example, it's better to be in there for an hour every other day than for a half hour every day. That way you force them to have to kind of interact with you and not just duck in a hide for the entire time. Because there is a point, I mean, you might have some Ackies that just always duck in a hide and you need to try to make progress with that. If you can, like I said, I would lay off when they go in a hide and give them some space. But that's if you have an Aki that you know you could work with. If they're really anti-bonding with you and always going into a hide, then you're gonna wanna wait them out. And more importantly, if you're working with one that's out and about, they're gonna probably interact with you at some point if you're in there for a longer period of time. So brief stints aren't gonna be as effective. Working our way over to the babies now. Now, hold on, hold on. Go like that. Like... Working our way over to the babies now. We're gonna be demonstrating with them. These guys are just a couple weeks old. Just a newly hatched clutch. So I'm gonna kind of just show what, you know, if you have a brand new, fresh out of the egg Aki, what you should sort of expect from starting this interaction, this taming process. So like I did previously, I'm kind of just gonna lay my hand in there. A lot of the times when these guys, they can be a little weird because some of them really don't have that fight or flight instinct in them too much yet. But overall, they're very kind of cautious. You can see how that one kind of just checked me out but then darted away. That's really probably the typical for these guys. Okay, so again, for demonstrative purposes, just gonna put my hand closer to these guys than I normally would to start this out. Again, some of them are not immediately afraid. You saw the guy on the right kind of checked me out briefly, then went back. This one to the left, though, seems kind of pretty chill. Some of them really don't pay much mind to you. They're kind of oblivious to you unless you really do some motion that sets them off. But overall, I think they're kind of more flight or fight than anything. But there is definitely a possibility during the first several weeks, maybe the first month, for them to really not be as scared of you or worried about you as they will get over the next several months. Now the thing is, by the time a lot of keepers get their Aki and don't breed them, which they would have them right off the bat, 
they're probably at least a month old, probably two months. So around that time, that's when they're really gonna get much more fight or flight, not really exhibit the behaviors I'm kind of showing with these babies, where they're not as worried about you right away. So you're probably not gonna experience this stage too much. You're probably gonna get an Aki who's kind of scared from the shipment, getting into a new environment, gonna hide a lot the first couple of weeks, and that's totally fine. I wouldn't start the taming process that early. But then eventually, once you see that come coming out more, you're going to want to start doing the taming process. And I don't want you guys to get the wrong impression, sort of, by what you're seeing here. While you saw some untamedness in my Aki's, most of them were out throughout the whole process and intrigued with my hand in some regard, and I wouldn't say that's very typical. So I hope you get what I'm saying. They're just really not going to be too into you in the beginning. I know that really turns off a lot of people and makes them think they're doing something wrong. They're not going to be out and about like these guys are. So still work with the taming process, still look for those goals I showed you throughout this video of how you want them to approach you and such, and what the whole meaning between fiddling and putting your hand in there is. That's really a great method, and I promise you it will work if you keep at it. Anyway guys, that wraps up this video. I want to really hear what you think about this video, being that I've done a lot of the B-roll over top videos sitting outdoors. Do you like the style video? Should I do more style videos like this? Either way, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Couple announcements before we officially wrap up. Shout out to you wonderful patrons, Kat and Rick, the Hans Bioactive Reptiles, Brian B, Herb M, Angela L, David T, and Smooth Cat. I really appreciate your support. You guys too can be patrons for as little as a dollar a month. Check the top right for more information. Also, we got some really cool merch. We have four different designs just wearing my logo today, but you'll see the rest of the designs to the left of my head right at your screen. If you're into them, check the Teespring link in the description below. Okay, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it, and we'll see you guys next week.